The first reading is from the Old Testament, Proverbs 3, 1 to 10. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all you produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Second reading is from the New Testament, Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet, I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I need to speak to the back of the church, according to Jim, so everyone will hear, because sometimes my voice goes very soft and no one can hear me, but now I will speak to the back of the church. Thank you, Jim, for reminding me of that. I was reading a book by Dr. Jer David Jeremiah addressing 10 questions Christians are asking. And one of the questions is, how can I get victory over worry? He starts off with, a nervous airline passenger began pacing the terminal when he had bad, a bad weather delay and his flight was delayed. During his walk, he came across a life insurance machine that offered $100,000 in the event of his death during the flight. The policy was only $3, so he looked out the window, thought about his family, and purchased the policy, then proceeded to a nice dinner at a Chinese restaurant. Relaxed, he opened his fortune cookie, which read, your recent investment will pay big dividends. We may all smile at the traveler, but we all battle with concerns that upset our inner peace. Our lives are full of concerns that sometimes they have a way of turning into monsters in our minds. 
Worry is a concern on steroids. It attacks our peace of heart, our faith, and can turn us into inside out and into knots. It fills our minds with doubt and attacks our emotional well-being. In an article in 2013 entitled Surviving Anxiety, Scott Stossel describes his own battle with worry from childhood through his adult life and how anxiety had affected him. When he was a young boy, both mom and dad worked, and he was spending evenings at home with a sitter and worried about his parents being killed in a car crash. He spent months in the office at school begging to go home because he was worried about mom and dad not being there when he got home. In high school, he would propose purposely lose a tennis match to escape the agony of anxiety that competitive situations would provoke in him. He goes on to say that he tried every type of therapy, every type of drug. The bottom line, nothing worked. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. How do you think Scott's life would have changed if he would have trusted in the Lord? Jesus, the great physician, in the Sermon on the Mount, gave us a direct prescription for worry, anxiety, and for our daily walk of faith. Jesus said in Matthew 6.25, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. So why do we worry? Don't worry. There are a few sayings that define worry. Worry is an old man with a bent head, carrying a load of feathers, which he thinks is lead. Worry is like a rocking chair that gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere. Worry is a misuse of your God-given imagination. Worry is putting a question mark where God has put a period. Worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. Worry is a form of atheism. I'm going to repeat that. Worry is a form of atheism because it assumes there is no God watching over us. Worry is faith in the negative. Worry is an emotional spasm which occurs when the mind catches hold of something and will not let it go. Much of our worry, anxiety, and fretting is about the future, which is something we can do nothing about. Only God knows the future. We can't control it. So worrying is like having your spirit pulled apart, having divided thoughts between legitimate and destructive ones. In James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea which is driven and tossed by the wind. 
for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, Martha flew around the house working and fretting and fussing and wanting her sister to help. But the Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Mary's talking with Jesus and Martha's complaining about it. Mary chose to be with Jesus. Lots of us are Martha's. We fly around worried and troubled about many things. Our world makes it easy to worry. With bad reports in the news all day long, it is difficult not to worry and to get my pages apart. Jesus said in Luke 12, 25 through 31, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Don't worry. But as Christians, we have better reasons not to worry. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Surely the one who gave us life can meet our needs. If you believe God is our creator, you should also believe he is our sustainer. Otherwise, you are inconsistent in your beliefs. And Jesus uh, said in Matthew 6, 26, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Not one of God's creatures falls to the ground without his notice. But as wonderful, colorful, and songful as the birds are, the birds of the air are not as valuable as you. There's a poem written in the 1800s and it goes like this. It's two birds talking to each other. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about worrying so. The sparrow said to the robin, Friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. If you truly believe in Jesus, you do have a heavenly father who cares about you. If you are worrying, you need to step back and reevaluate your relationship with Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 5, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 27, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his day or to his life? None of us. We can't live in the past. We don't live in the future. We live in the now. So don't worry about the past and don't worry about the future. David Jeremiah makes a statement that worrying can't help us live longer, 
but may very well shorten our lives. Hmm. We know that stress caused by worrying can cause us a heart attack and shorten our lives. God doesn't want us to worry. He doesn't want us to have anxiety. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 30, And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus repeats himself to drive the point home and call out what worrying and fretting really is. It's not trusting in the words of our Lord and Savior. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31, 2, and 3, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first seek the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious about itself. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. God knows in the past I've had my share of worrying about family, work, finances, and health. The list can go on. The difference for me now is I trust in my Heavenly Father who gives me peace that surpasses all understanding to deal with the problems in my life. He's in control of our lives. And if he is truly in control, why would you dishonor him by worrying? I had the privilege of going to India in 2007 on a mission trip, medical camp, and uh, people would go to, uh, uh, we had five small churches that held these medical camps, and the community would come in, the Hindu community would come into the church, and uh, they would come in first and register, then they would go have their blood pressure taken, then they would go see the doctor, uh, then they'd go see the pharmacist if the doctor had prescribed medication. And then they would come to us and we would pray over them and they would leave the building. There was this one lady. Her mother brought her in. She was shaking and bent over, shaking like crazy. She had not been out of her home in over two years because her anxiety was so bad she couldn't muster up the strength to even walk out of the house. She was afraid of everything. Lynn Gettinger, uh, Pastor Gettinger's wife was on our trip with us and it was her uh, turn to pray. Her and I were praying together and we would take turns back and forth. She'd pray for one person, I'd pray for the next person because it'll wear you out. It's wonderful to do, but you can get tired. So there was, a, there was probably 500 people at this medical camp. This mother brought her daughter in skipped the doctors, didn't want any, anything to do with the doctors. She went directly to the pastor. Now, this is a Hindu woman. Went directly to the pastor and said, I hear there's Christians here from America that are praying for people. And she's dragging her daughter because her daughter did not want to come. 
and her daughter's crying and bent over, and, and uh, she said, I would like to know where the Christians are, and I want them to pray over my daughter. So the pastor brought them to us, Lynn and I, and it was Lynn's turn to pray. We both laid hands on her, and Lynn started praying. And as we were praying, Lynn's on this side of me, the girl's in front of us, my hand's on her head, Lynn's hand's on her head. As we were praying, my hand is going up. And when Lynn finished praying, I opened my eyes, and this woman, about 28 years old, was standing upright, and she had the most beautiful glow that I had, and smile on her face that I had ever seen in my life. And Lynn put her hands on her cheeks and kissed her on the lips. The Holy Spirit touched that woman right there and healed her. And she walked out of the building upright, holding her mother's arm with the biggest smile on her face. It was an incredible thing for me to see. When you start worrying about something, stop yourself and think about what is beautiful. Think about things that God has given you and tell the worry to step to the side. In John 1.14, Jesus said, and this is something we should live by, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. Don't worry. God doesn't want us to worry. Take all your troubles to him in prayer. Thank you.